RC Cola had its beginnings in Columbus, Georgia, when pharmacist Claude Hatcher wanted to create and bottle drinks for his family's grocery store. It was, in fact, a disagreement with Coca-Cola that led Hatcher to develop what would become the Royal Crown Cola Company. Hatcher was a pharmacist and a grocery wholesaler who, along with his father, ran the Hatcher Grocery Company. In the early 1900s, the Hatchers sold a lot of Coca-Cola to their customers so much that Hatcher felt he was entitled to some sort of commission from the company. The local Coke representative denied the request, so Hatcher decided to stop selling Coca-Cola in his stores. He instead decided to create his own soda recipe in his store's basement. After months of experimenting, in 1905, Claude came up with Royal Crown Ginger Ale. The drink was quite popular. Claude's next development was Chero Cola, a cherry-flavored cola that would grow the company into a legitimate soda maker, while at the same time putting him in direct competition with the brand he used to sell, Coca-Cola. The business took off so quickly that the Hatchers soon found themselves out of the grocery business and into soda manufacturing. They established the Chero Cola Company, and by 1920, they had grown to supply soda syrups to 700 franchised plants for bottling. Coca-Cola was not pleased with the cola designation in its name and sued the company, claiming that it owned the term. In 1923, a judge ruled in Coca-Cola's favor saying that Chero Cola was in violation of Coke's trademark. That meant Hatcher had to drop cola from his company's name, and a drink called Chero just didn't sound the same. And sales began to steadily fall off. As a result, Chero was discontinued, as Hatcher instead developed a fruity soda called Nehi. This led to another company name change, to the Nehi Corporation in 1928. The Great Depression put a dent in Nehi's sales, and to make matters worse, Claude Hatcher died in 1933. Nehi was left in the hands of sales director H.R. Mott. Mott decided to reintroduce Chero Cola without the cherry flavoring and under a new name, Royal Crown, in honor of the company's original ginger ale. Over the next several years, its sales increased tenfold. By 1940, the soda had reached 47 states, backed by advertisements featuring the era's biggest stars, like Bob Hope, Lucille Ball, and Bing Crosby. This same year, the company held public blind taste tests nationwide versus other competitors, and they won. Things kept getting better for Royal Crown. A judge ruled in 1944 that the word cola was again fair game for manufacturers so the company was renamed once more as Royal Crown Cola Company. Its most popular drink then became known as RC Cola.
Royal Crown Cola was one of the most innovative companies in the beverage industry. As they slowly made their way into soda fountains and onto grocery store shelves, it came out with the first canned soda. Shortly after that, they were the first to begin selling soda in 16-ounce bottles. They were also the first to sell caffeine-free soda, called RC100. To jump ahead of its competitors, RC Cola realized they needed something different. So in the mid-1950s, they began developing a diet cola that would appeal nationwide to calorie-conscious consumers. They were successful and became the first company to take diet cola mainstream. They came out with Diet Right, which was nearly calorie-free while tasting very similar to the real thing. When Diet Right hit shelves in 1962, it was an instant success. Within a year and a half of its release, it had rocketed up to number four on the sales chart behind Coke, Pepsi, and regular RC Cola. Unfortunately, the Diet Cola generated controversy due to a sweetener that was eventually banned in 1970 over health concerns. Since Diet Right Cola had helped Royal Crown sail to the number one diet soda spot, the health scare caused the company's sales to plummet. Through the 1980s and into the 1990s, Royal Crown continued to lose market value, while its two main competitors continued to rise. RC's appeal now seemed tied to small-town America and times gone by. The fact is, RC's roots go deep in the South, where drinking one with a moon pie is a tradition that's still popular today. For many American soda fans, it remains a beloved southern underdog that's worth sipping. <laughs>